Imagine, if you will, a sprawling expanse, a vast complex of nearly a thousand buildings set in the very heart of Beijing. This is the Forbidden City, a place where the line between heaven and earth was said to blur, where the echo of dragon's breath could stir the air in the halls of power. Built in the early 15th century, during the reign of Yongle Emperor of the Ming Dynasty, this imperial palace has weathered the storms of centuries, a silent witness to the rise and fall of empires. Its very name, Forbidden City, stirs a sense of mystery and exudes an aura of the untouchable. Only the imperial family and their most trusted aides could tread upon these sacred grounds, while commoners could only dream of what lay beyond its protective moat and towering walls. Its architecture is a marvel. Each tile, each pillar, and each forbidden gate, such as the Meridian Gate, a meticulous orchestration of power and divine right. Consider the Hall of Supreme Harmony, the largest hall within the complex, where enthronements and imperial weddings were once celebrated under intricately decorated wooden beams, supported by golden columns. But what of the stories hidden beneath its rooftops, each one glazed in imperial yellow, the color reserved for the emperor? Legends abound of secret love affairs, of emperors who walked the fine line between genius and madness, and of concubines who plotted in the shadows. Take the story of the infamous Empress Dowager Cixi, who, in the waning days of the Qing Dynasty, clutched the reins of power from behind the silk curtains of the throne room, an unofficial ruler whose influence extended far beyond the palace's vermilion walls. And what of the fables whispered amongst the locals, of spirits roaming the grand courtyards during lunar new moons, or of hidden treasures buried deep within its underground chambers. It's rumored that the construction required the hands of a million workers, deft artisans who forever sealed their craft and perhaps even their spirits into the very foundations of this majestic edifice. So one must ask, who were these emperors who walked these forbidden halls? Were they divine beings as they claimed, standing above the common rabble, commanding mandate from heaven itself? Or were they mere mortals, cloaked in the trappings of invincible authority, striving to etch their legacy into the annals of time? And what of the inner workings of this palatial expanse? What secrets did it hold, and what truths might still be unearthed from within its silent walls and shadowed alcoves? The Forbidden City, an eternal enigma, cradles tales of glory and intrigue, like precious pearls hidden within its many-layered folds. As we delve deeper into its complex narrative, let us ponder the lessons it imparts and the humanity it cloaks beneath its gilded surface. Nestled in the very heart of Beijing, the forbidden city, known as Gugong in Mandarin, emerges as a testament to China's storied history. Its origin dates back to the early 15th century during the reign of the Yongle Emperor of the Ming Dynasty. Conceived as a place to project the might and majesty of the imperial pedigree, the Forbidden City began its journey in Chinese history in the year 1406, taking 14 years and an estimated 1 million laborers to complete. Its grandeur stands as the embodiment of Chinese architectural splendor, spanning an area of 180 acres. With its 980 surviving buildings and 8,707 bays of rooms, the imperial complex is a marvel of ancient design. Each hall, each pavilion, carries with it the weight of history, showcasing the finest artisanship of Chinese civilization. Over five centuries, it served as the imperial abode and governance hub for 24 emperors until the abdication of the last emperor, Puyi, in 1912. Here in the heart of Beijing, the Forbidden City remained aloof from the outside world, while power ebbed and flowed within its walls. As we explore the sprawling expanse of courtyards and palaces, it's clear that every feature holds a deeper meaning. The location itself was chosen for its alignment with the cosmic order, designed according to ancient principles of geomancy. Situated at the center of Beijing's ancient axis, flanked by mountains to the north as a natural barrier, it stands as a physical manifestation of the universe as envisioned by the Ming architects. The Forbidden City is oriented to face south, which in Chinese culture symbolizes fire and the heavens, another indication of the emperor's godlike authority over their earthly domain. From the Meridian Gate, where the emperor would parade in splendor to pronounce the new lunar calendar, 
to the Hall of Supreme Harmony, where grand ceremonies took place, each element was steeped in symbolic import. The colors, the numbers of statues, even the arrangement of buildings adhere to strict philosophical precepts and communicate the supreme power of the emperor. Golds and reds, symbols of wealth and happiness, decorate the roofing and walls, while the repeated motif of the dragon, the emblem of the emperor, signifies imperial power and nobility. Beyond the surface, the construction itself was a wonder of the medieval world. No nails were used in the construction of the wooden beams and rafters. Instead, a complex system of tenons and mortises locked the structure together, a silent testament to the ingenuity of the workers who toiled on this colossal project. Even the mortar used in its walls was unique, a mixture of glutinous rice flour and slaked lime, giving the walls their resilience that allowed them to withstand the ravages of time. Through its enduring architecture and its deep symbolic significance, the Forbidden City lives on, not just as an awe-inspiring complex of palatial structures, but as an enduring symbol of China's history, power, and artistry in stone and timber. It's a timeless legacy that continues to inspire and captivate those who walk its ancient grounds, and it stands as a proud witness to the empires that rose and fell in the land of the dragon. As we continue to peel back the layers of time, the Forbidden City reveals itself not only as an unparalleled structure of the physical world, but also as a cornerstone of the metaphysical, a representation of the divine order on earth. Here, history is solidified in architecture, and every path through this city is a journey through the centuries of China's imperial past. Step behind the red lacquer doors adorned with golden lions and enter the world through the eyes of an emperor. Picture, if you will, the heart of the Forbidden City, the Hall of Supreme Harmony. Here, beneath the magnificently carved dragon throne, the Son of Heaven performs the sacred rites upon which the fate of the empire rests. The year is 1420, under the watch of Emperor Yongle, the third emperor of the Ming Dynasty, the Forbidden City sees its completion a monumental testament to a sovereign's divine right to rule. Within these walls, the emperor rises with the sun. His day commences with the morning court, where high officials and mandarins convene, not daring to outshine the emperor, wrapped in silken robes, bearing the weight of the dragon emblem. Imagine the meticulous rituals, each movement choreographed with heavenly precision. The court astronomer announces the auspicious hours, and the daily audience commences. Here the empire's vast affairs are decided, as the emperor, encircled by tiers of red columns that stretch upwards to the painted heavens, manifests his will with a stroke of the brush. Each season brings its ceremonies, like the spring festival, where the air thrums with the beat of drums and the rustle of banners as the emperor prays for a bountiful harvest. In the solemnity of the winter solstice, he offers sacrifices to heaven at the temple of heaven, its blue tiles reflecting the sky from which he draws his mandate. It is the Qing Dynasty, the year 1644. Emperor Shunji, barely six years of age, is enthroned amidst the turmoil of change. Watch as he grows, a puppet in the hands of regents, until the vigor of young manhood brings with it a desire for rule. Under the vast wooden beams, etched with dragons, the struggle for power brews, as the young emperor takes the reins and makes his mark, in the narrative of the empire's rule. Anecdotes whisper through the corridors about the legendary Emperor Kangxi, one of the longest reigning emperors. Listen closely, and you may hear tales of his incognito journeys outside the palace, his heart open to the plights of his people, bringing human sentiment to his divine status. Such is the life within these walls, sublime but solitary. And what of the intrigue? Within these fortified ramparts, the emperor's ears are besieged with whispers from the inner court, eunuchs and consorts vying for favor, each with their own covert agenda. Take, for example, the notorious empress dowager Sixi, who, as a concubine of lesser rank, ascended to eminence, casting a long shadow over the late Qing dynasty from behind the silk curtains of the throne. In the private quarters, beyond the reach of the public's gaze, the emperor finds repose from the rituals and demands of state. In the gentle strum of the Guchin, the tranquil brushstrokes of calligraphy, the emperor reflects, perhaps, on his role in sustaining the celestial harmony, which dictates not only the fate of his dominion, 
but ties his own soul inextricably to the empire he personifies. These emperors, divine in their authority, were as human as any other. Each possessed hopes and fears, moments of decisiveness and doubt. Journeying through their reigns, we uncover a past so intricate and compelling, it transcends the mere facts of history, inviting us to ponder the very essence of power and human destiny within the unyielding walls of the Forbidden City. As we step into the realm of Section 4, the sheer architectural ingenuity of the Forbidden City beckons us closer, inviting us to appreciate not just its grandeur, but also the innovative prowess that its creation demanded. In a time where architectural design was as much about aesthetics as functionality, the Forbidden City stood as a testament to the milieu's craftsmanship. Erected during the early 15th century, this imperial complex, constructed under the auspices of the Yongle Emperor of the Ming Dynasty, was a marvel in urban planning, a phenomenon of construction that evoked awe and reverence. The design of the Forbidden City is a meticulous arrangement embodying the paramount principle of harmony and order. With a layout based on ancient Chinese cosmology, the city is symmetrically aligned along a central north-south axis, which is considered the backbone of the design. Its grandeur can be quantified not only by the 980 surviving buildings and the nearly 9,000 rooms unfolding within, but also by the invisible threads of symbolism that run through its architectural veins. To the Chinese, the city was a terrestrial domain mirroring the celestial, a palace complex exuding the profound philosophy of the purple forbidden enclosure, a constellation associated with the heavenly abode of the gods and the son of heaven, the emperor himself. Integrated into its structural marvel is the ancient practice of feng shui or geomancy. The Forbidden City's location was chosen with the utmost care to ensure harmony with natural elements. Surrounded by hills to the north to protect it from the cold Siberian winds, it simultaneously faces the south for the sun's blessing. The moat and walls serve as barriers to malevolent forces, both physical and spiritual. Additionally, internal and external constructs respect feng shui principles, from the distribution of courtyards to the positioning of the buildings, to cultivate prosperity and auspiciousness within the emperor's abode. Let us not mistake in the Forbidden City's ornamentation for fragility, as its strategic fortifications were paramount. Its walls, averaging 26 feet high, and the moat, spanning approximately 171 feet in width, were designed to withstand sieges and to reflect an image of an impervious bastion. Watchtowers on each corner of the high walls stand even today as silent sentinels, their 72 ridges symbolizing the 72 noble lineages, as noted by the Neo-Confucianist Zhou Dunyi, adding layers of sacred symbolism to the city's defense mechanisms. The craftsmanship of the Forbidden City cannot be underscored without mention of the dugong, a traditional Chinese architectural element of interlocked wooden brackets that are a key feature of this feat of engineering. Without the use of nails, these intricately carved components not only exemplified Chinese carpentry, but also demonstrated an understanding of earthquake-resistant structures long before the modern world addressed seismic challenges. The dugong bracket system allowed the buildings to sway slightly during tremors, dispersing the energy and protecting the structures from collapse. In culmination, the architectural splendor of the Forbidden City is no mere relic but an enduring illustration of historical prowess, cultural symbolism, and ancient wisdom woven into the very fabric of its being. Its ramparts, the silent witnesses to centuries of history, still stand robustly at the heart of Beijing, a majestic blend of defensive might and philosophical mastery, enthralling and educating all who walk its sacred grounds. For centuries, the Forbidden City in Beijing stood as the epicenter of Chinese imperial might, a bastion of tradition, culture, and power, sealed off from the prying eyes of the common folk. Accessible only to the emperor, his entourage, and a select few, it represented an era of seclusion that nurtured a secretive and mystical allure around its crimson walls. As the tide of time rolled on, so too did the narrative of this architectural marvel. With the fall of the Qing Dynasty in 1912 and the birth of the Republic of China, the Forbidden City faced an existential crossroads. The abdication of Puyi, 
the last emperor, marked both an end and a beginning, as the palace transitioned from an exclusive imperial residence to a historical treasure accessible to all. Yet, it was not a transition devoid of tribulation. During the Cultural Revolution in the mid-20th century, the Forbidden City, along with countless other historical sites, found itself at the mercy of radical ideologies. Mao Zedong's campaign to modernize China's identity led to a sweeping condemnation of the Four Olds, old customs, habits, culture, and thinking. The Forbidden City survived, though many of its treasures were damaged or destroyed, a testament to the resilience of history against the onslaught of change. In contemporary times, the Forbidden City, now known as the Palace Museum, embraces modernity while steadfastly preserving its storied past. Restoration efforts echo through courtyards as experts endeavor to maintain the authenticity of its heritage. Around 14 million visitors are captivated annually by the intricate designs and grandiosity of its structures, a stark contrast to its cloistered history. The Forbidden City's narrative is no longer confined to the select few, but shared with the world, emphasizing China's dedication to protecting its cultural patrimony. The palace serves not just as a connection to the imperial era, but as a bridge between the bygone days and the future, anchoring traditions in the fast-paced evolution of contemporary culture. As such, it finds its place in the UNESCO World Heritage Site listing, honored as a masterpiece of human creativity. As we witness the development of Beijing around it, with skyscrapers brushing the skies and the hum of modern life ever-present, the Forbidden City remains a cultural bedrock. It reminds us of the power of preservation, the constant negotiation between progress and the past. Its open doors now welcome us to not only traverse its vast spaces, but also to ponder the profound impact of history on our collective identity. In closing, the Forbidden City, once the heart of an empire shrouded in secrecy, now beats in rhythm with the world's pulse, a shared heritage that continues to fascinate and inform. Its walls whisper tales of emperors and ceremonies of old, yet echo the ambitions of the present, a monumental legacy that endures as a symbol of China's unbroken narrative thread through the fabric of time. As we draw the curtains on today's auditory excursion through the grandeur of the Forbidden City, we step back to recount the essence of our journey. We've wandered through the annals of a complex, enigmatic past, one that has been both alluringly majestic and cryptic in its silence. Today, we've unearthed the tales of its inception, marveled at its architectural innovations, and glimpsed the lives of the emperors who called it home. At the very start, we painted a vivid image of the Forbidden City, almost feeling the overwhelming might of the Ming Dynasty as it laid the foundation stone in the year 1406. It took 14 years, a monumental human endeavor, until its completion in 1420, involving over a million workers. The vision of Emperor Yongle materialized into the world's largest palace complex, standing as a testament to the potency and splendor of his reign. Navigating further, we witnessed the grand ceremonies, the daily rituals of imperial life, and the rhythm of a court that beat to the drum of tradition and power. We revealed how the Forbidden City was a stage on which the theater of dynastic authority played out, not just for emperors like the well-known Yongle or the last emperor, Puyi, but an entire cast of characters woven into the fabric of China's history. Through the Qing Dynasty's end in 1912, our exploration extended to the personal stories and political intrigues that resonated within the city's walls, breathing life into history's stoic narrative. In awe, we observed the artistic and architectural prowesses of this fortress of culture, with its 980 surviving buildings, and the meticulous care that went into each carved balustrade, each sweeping roof adorned with imperial yellow tiles, and every guardian lion that stood silent watch. We reveled in the symbolism, where each layout from the Hall of Supreme Harmony to the moat that surrounds was a carefully chosen representation of cosmic order and harmony, deeply embedded in the principles of feng shui and traditional Chinese cosmology. Nevertheless, the Forbidden City did not remain forbidden. In the last century, it transformed from an isolated nexus of power to an open trove of cultural marvel. We delved into its rebirth, from the throes of the Cultural Revolution in the 1960s and 70s, when it faced potential peril, 
to its resurgence as a monument so emblematic of China's journey that it now stands as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, visited by millions each year. And so, my fellow historians, we contemplate the imprint of the Forbidden City upon the broader canvas of human endeavor. It stands as a microcosm of China's vast imperial tapestry, a symbol of an era that valued splendor and strict social order. Its resilience, through wars and revolutions, through the rise and fall of empires, speaks volumes about the legacy it represents, a testament to the eternal human aspiration to build, to create, to leave something lasting in the sands of time. As a pillar of culture and history, it continues to captivate and educate, reminding us that the Forbidden City, much like the stories it holds, will endure as a defining chapter in the narrative of human civilization. As we conclude today's journey through the sands of time, we're reminded that history is not just about the dates and the dead. It's a living, breathing legacy that continues to shape who we are. History is a canvas, and every day we paint a new part of the picture that tells the story of us all. Thank you for joining us on the Daily History Podcast. Your curiosity fuels our exploration, and your support makes this journey possible. If you haven't already, Please subscribe to our channel and share your thoughts with us. We welcome you to comment with your suggestions for future episodes. The topic with the most likes will be featured in an upcoming podcast. Your voice matters, and together we will uncover the endless secrets that history has yet to reveal. Until next time, keep exploring, keep wondering, and most importantly, stay connected with us. Your next historical adventure awaits.